Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to review this AO lithium battery. This is lithium iron phosphate battery bank, 12 volts, 100 amp hours. It has Bluetooth capability. You can connect your phone and see information about the battery. It could handle 1C rating for charge and discharge. So that means you can charge with 100 amps and discharge with the same amperage. And additionally, you can do 200 amps peak discharge for less than 10 seconds. In this video, I'm going to do capacity test for this battery bank. Then we'll try to charge and discharge using 100 amps. And then we'll do stress test. We'll try to, we'll, we'll see what's going to happen with this pack. If we're going to draw 200 amps for continuous time or even more amps. All right, let's jump into the video. And the first test, let's measure capacity of this battery. And I'm going to apply 0.2C load rating and uh, we'll measure capacity for this pack. All right, EMS just disconnected battery from the load and we've got 103 amp hours, which is excellent results for this 100 amps battery. Now let's disassemble this pack. Let's see what is inside and we'll try to charge and discharge this battery using 1C rating and we'll see how this handle it. And right here is a battery inside. We have flexible uh, bus bars. And then we have right here is a Bluetooth module. And then we have this massive BMS. And here is a battery inside. We have two temperature sensor con connected one to bus bars right here. And the second temperature sensor connected right here. So then we have um, four cells. Right there I can see serial number for this cell. Then it's going to BMS and BMS is a 100 amps. And then all of these cells were secured with bolts to this case. Okay, right now let me assemble this back and we will do charge test and we will see how this cells is going to handle this uh, 100 amps charge. Actually my charger can give me only 75 amps. So I'm going to attach this power supply as well with 10 additional amps. And we're gonna get about 85 amps of charge. Okay, so we got 88, 89 amps. Let's come back in 30 minutes and we'll measure temperature for BMS and for cells itself. We'll see how this handles this amperage. So we're charging at about 25 minutes right now. So on the application, I can see that it shows 48.2 Celsius for temperature. Let's see what is the actual temperature right here. So we have BMS at about 90, actually 105 Fahrenheit. Bus bars about 110. And the cells, if I can reach it right there. And cells at about 95 Fahrenheit. And now let's see how this battery bank can handle 100 amps discharge. Right now I'm doing 93 amps, almost 93 amps. That's as close as possible I can get to 100. And the uh, temperature for pack right now is a 74 Fahrenheit. 79 and a half for bus bars. Let's come back in 30 minutes and we'll see how warm this battery is going to get. Let's see what is the temperature for BMS and bus bars. So BMS itself about 91 Fahrenheit. Bus bars about 99 maximum. And cells 95. And uh, right now I'm going to bump amperage and we'll see overload protection in action. So we draw from pack 138 amps. And seller said that uh, over 120 amps, it will protect the cells. And this just happened. And uh, in application for this battery bank, we can read the parameters such as state of charge. We can see voltage for pack, where is, it, where is the current going into or out of the battery, temperature from uh, sensors, power in watts, how many times our battery was cycled, then we can see average voltage per cell, uh, nominal capacity and residual capacity. If we go to parameters, right here we can see all values. Uh, what is the overcharge, over discharge, what is the release voltage. It's read only values, so we cannot change this. Then in the history, we can see graph with voltages, what was uh, average, maximum, minimum and what is the current voltage. Then we can see capacity, how capacity was changing uh, during the time, same for temperature. 
And the last page right here is just a version of uh, BMS, I guess, or application. All right, and as a last test, let's uh, do low and high temperature protection. So I have two temperature sensors detached from uh, battery terminals. So let's put this in hot water. And we're reading, okay, so it worked. So we're reading 70, almost 78 Fahrenheit. Now let's do cold water test. That's interesting. For the, for, for the cold iced water, we're still reading 38 Celsius, which is obviously not true. Let's try hot water one more time. Okay. Let's try another sensor. Yep, it works. So it looks like over temperature protection works, but low temperature protection doesn't work. And uh, right now this temperature is about, I'm not sure if my meter is gonna read this, but it's about 34 Fahrenheit or 1.5 Celsius. And uh, right, right here we're reading 38.3 Celsius. I was assembling this battery back and uh, I thought this is possible that this cold water is not getting cold enough for low temperature protection. Right here it's saying that for charging it, it should operate between 0 Celsius and 55 Celsius for charge and discharge minus 20 to 60 Celsius. So it's possible that it's not getting cold enough, not below 0 Celsius even with iced water. So I'm just going to insert this temperature sensors right here. And uh, this container will freeze this sensor sensors below zero Celsius for sure. Yep, and actually it worked. So we uh, we're not charging this pack anymore. So low temperature protection works as well. All right, guys, that was a quick review for this battery bank. It performed well for per all specification. Uh, it's actually pretty nicely built battery bank uh, and uh, it's good that it has own Bluetooth connection. And of course, price is a higher end for this kind of battery banks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and see you later.